Guy Georges was born Guy Rampelin on October 10th or 15th, 1962, to a French mother and a black American father named George Cartwright who worked as a military cook for the United States military at a NATO post. An older kid named Stéphane was born to Helene Rampelin and a white American serviceman. Helene's parents raised Stéphane instead of Guy since Guy was Helene's second child and because mixed-race kids were stigmatized in their angers, France, hometown. Guy was raised by the Morin family after spending the previous six years traveling between foster homes and his mother's care. He then became a ward of the state. Guy was a replacement child for another black youngster previously cared for by the Morins but later taken away by the police. The Morins have 13 foster kids in addition to their seven biological kids. Guy's last name was changed to George's in 1968. With her oldest son, Helene Rampelin relocated to California because she desired to wed another American service member there. As a youngster, Georges started robbing the family grocery store and going knife hunting in the nearby woodland. He adopted the moniker Joe in honor of Injun Joe from The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. At the age of 14, he made an attempt to strangle his mentally challenged younger foster sister Rosaline. Christine, his older foster sister, testified that Georges tried to strangle her with an iron rod when he was 16 years old. After that, Georges was placed in a public orphanage. Up until his arrest for the East Paris killings, he was thereafter in and out of jail and prison for various crimes and assaults on women. At the age of 14, Georges attempted to strangle Roseline D., one of his adopted sisters who had mental disabilities, in his first violent act. This occurred in 1976. He attacked Christiane D., another of his adoptive sisters, two years later. Mrs. Morin organized for Georges to be handed back over to the authorities out of concern for her family's well-being. After being placed once more in foster care, Georges struggled to control his violent impulses and attacked once more on February 6, 1979. He attacked Pascal C., a girl, and attempted to strangle her, but she was able to get away. Police detained him, but they let him go after a week. Georges, who had been rejected by his foster family, became more and more depressed and turned to drink for comfort. In May 1980, Georges, then 17 years old, attacked Joseline S. Later on in the month, he attacked Roseline C. and stabbed her repeatedly in the face. Both victims of the attacks lived, and Georges was apprehended once more and sentenced to a year in a war region jail at Angers. Georges relocated to Paris with a friend after being released from prison, in the eastern part of the city. He was living in squats. No one had any suspicions that Georges was the serial killer he was. He engaged in minor offenses to get by, drank a lot, and made friends with young people who were into left-wing politics. Georges committed his first RP a month after turning 19 years old. He attacked a neighbor named Natalie C. on November 16, 1981, while she was going home. She was R-worded, then she was stabbed and left for dead. Natalie C. miraculously escaped the assault. After serving a five-month sentence for theft, Georges retaliated by attacking. He R-worded, stabbed, and strangled Violet K. on June 7, 1982 in a parking lot of the 16th arrondissement, but she managed to flee and call the police. Georges was detained a short while after and given an 18-month prison term. In February 1984, shortly after his release, Georges attacked 21-year-old Pascal N. in a parking lot and stabbed and R-worded her. She was able to release herself and flee. Georges was detained by police later that evening. He received a 10-year prison term in 1985 at the Muathet Moselle Court of Assizes. Towards the end of his sentence, Georges was permitted to leave jail during the day for good behavior, but he was still compelled to come back each evening to spend the night. He simply skipped reporting to prison on the evening of January 24 and went to Paris to carry out his first homicide. He saw a pretty young woman crossing the street. It was Sorbonne student Pascal Escarfail who is 19 years old. She was opening her front door when Georges followed her home and seized her. He entered the room while holding a knife to her throat, tied her up, and R-worded her before cutting her throat and watching her die. Georges casually made his way back to prison a week after the murder. Georges was released from prison on April 4, 1992, and he immediately started looking for another young victim. He attacked a Leonor D on April 22, 1992, but she managed to flee and report the attack to the authorities. Another arrest was made for Georges. On January 7, 1994, Catherine Rock, then 27 years old, was ambushed by Georges in an underground parking garage, where he R-worded and killed her. Six days later, Georges struck once more. On January 13, 1994, he attacked Annie L., a radio personality, then R-worded and killed her on her terrace. 
In his subsequent attack, Georges R. Worded and killed Elsa Bennett, 22, in the 13th Arrondissement's underground parking garage on November 8, 1994. He attacked and killed 33-year-old Dutch architect Agnes Nekamp in her 11th arrondissement home a month later, on December 10, 1994. A killer in East Paris was first mentioned in the media. Elizabeth O. was attacked and nearly killed by Georges in June 1995, but she managed to escape. Helena Frinking, 27, was R-worded and killed by Georges on July 8, 1995, in her apartment after she got home from an evening out. On August 25, 1995, Georges attacked Melanie B. in the Marais neighborhood. The police inquiry into the killer of East Paris was making some headway. However, while Elizabeth O. was able to provide a general description of her assailant, she was unable to recognize Georges when shown with a picture of him. The same person's DNA was detected at two crime scenes, and police also discovered a footprint near the scene of the Helena Frinking murder. Castell F. was attacked by Georges in September 1997 and he tried to RP her, but she resisted and managed to flee. A few days later, on September 23, 1997, he broke into the residence of Magali Sarati, a 19-year-old student, and murdered her with a knife. On October 28, 1997, five days later, Georges attacked Valerie L. in the stairway of her apartment building. Less than a month later, on November 16, 1997, Georges invaded the house of Estelle Mag, 25, R. worded her before killing her. This was to be the Beast of Bastille's final victim. Police investigations were finally getting momentum, and they were confident that several of their unsolved crimes were connected and that they might be dealing with a serial killer. The media hysteria around the murders had caused a sense of panic among Parisians, because several of George's assaults took place in the fabled Parisian neighborhood known as the Bastille during the French Revolution. He came to be known as the Beast of Bastille. One of the biggest manhunts in French criminal history took place throughout it. On March 27, 1998, Georges was ultimately apprehended by police in Montmartre for the RP and deaths of Agnes Nakam, Catherine Rock, Elsa Benetti, and Pascal Escarfail. In the end, it was discovered that Georges' DNA matched samples from all four murder locations and one attempted RP. While in detention, Georges was confronted with the uncontestable DNA evidence and admitted to these four killings as well as three more. Georges attempted to flee while being held in detention in December 2000, just a few weeks before the start of his trial. He attempted to peer over the bars of his cell with his three roommates, but jail officials stopped him. Psychiatrists evaluated Georges and determined that he was fit to face trial and legally sane. The three-week experiment got underway on March 19, 2001. Four women who had previously been attacked and are worded by Georges were among the 50 witnesses. Fifteen experts, relatives of some of Georges' victims and George's foster mother, 71, were among those who testified. George's pleaded not guilty to all charges at trial despite prosecutor Eveline Lezier presenting the DNA evidence as well as the confession made upon his detention. He walked back his admission, saying the police had battered and tortured him to get it. Eight days into the trial, a defeated George's confessed while sobbing. He apologized to the families of the victims and acknowledged to the initial four murders as well as the RP and deaths of Helena Frinking in 1995. Magali Serrati in 1997, and Estelle Magd in 1997. Guy Georges, 38, was found guilty of R-wording and killing seven women between 1991 and 1997 and was given a life sentence without the chance of parole for 22 years on Thursday, April 5, 2001.